Hi everyone, welcome to my OMD Fine Print series where we cover some of the finer detailed settings in your camera and give you a few tips on how to use them to maybe improve your workflow or take better pictures. Today we'll be covering how to add your contact information directly into your camera via the copyright feature. And then we'll be talking about the priority set feature in your camera. And I'm not talking about the priority modes like aperture priority, shutter priority. I'm talking about the priority set feature, which only has a setting of yes or no. And then we'll be talking about the file naming conventions of your image files, how to do custom file names in camera, as well as what the file auto reset feature is. Now, the first tip is basically adding the contact information into your camera directly. And I got this idea actually from Robin Wong when he talked about adding his contact information in a readme.txt file on all of his SD cards in the root directory. So that if he happens to misplace or leave his camera somewhere and someone finds it, if they look at the SD card and the files in there, they'll see the readme.txt file and be able to open that and find all of his contact information and hopefully uh, reach out to him and return his camera. Now, this is a great idea, but it really it raises two problems for me in my workflow. And one is I like to reformat my cards every time before I go out on a job or on a photo walk. Um, and when you reformat the card, it's going to erase that readme.txt file. So Robin's solution is to just do a file erase or image erase instead of doing a formatting camera, thereby preserving the readme.txt file, and you, you'll have a clean memory card to go out and continue shooting. Uh, but the second problem is, is if you misplace your camera or leave your camera somewhere without a memory card in it, uh, they're not going to have your contact information anyway. So I think putting it in camera may be a better way to go or in addition to that readme.txt file idea. Now, that said, putting your contact information in your camera raises some privacy concerns as well, because every time you take a picture, that information is going to be embedded into every file. Uh, that you have. And then when you put your pictures online, if the exit data is not stripped out, uh, people are going to have your name, address, phone number, or whatever else you decide to put in there. So I think a good compromise would be to just put your email address and your name in the copyright information. So that way, at least they can reach out to you via email. And then uh, when you come to claim your camera, you can show them your ID and say, yes, this is me, this is my camera, my email address, etc. Uh, and then thank you very much here's your reward <laughs> but uh, so let's go ahead and let me show you how to do that uh, very quickly and then we'll move on to the next tip i'll be using the m5 mark ii as my base camera and these settings will be similar across all of the olympus cameras uh, they may be in a different place but they're easy enough to find so let's go into the menu and first thing i'm going to do is i'm just going to just do a full reset like so so that we're all on the same page and then I'm going to go down to the uh, custom menu. Let me turn off the info. And we'll go into record erase. And then under record erase, we just go down to the copyright settings and make sure we turn this on so that this information will be saved to every JPEG image or uh, image file we create, JPEG or RAW. And you'll notice in the artist name, that I put my email address in here, and that my email address took up 15 of the 63 characters. And if I need to make any changes, let's say I update my email address for some reason, all I have to do is click the info button. I can go in here and I can erase things by clicking the trash button, like so, and I'll go back, or click the info button, go down here, and add. COM back in like so. And when I'm done, I just go to end. So, and now that's been saved. And then for copyright name, I like to just say copyright 2021. You can see I've used 28 characters. Oops, I made a mistake there. So I'll just click the trash button to delete that space. And then here you can see I just put copyright 21 and my full name done. So I'll go down here, click end, and we're all set. Now the good thing is, if you remember, I did do a full reset at the beginning. If I do it again, you have to watch out for this one thing. The nice thing is, is that 
it does not erase the copyright information that I put in. It still has my email address and my name. However, the copyright info is turned off by default so that now this information will not be saved to your individual uh, image files. So just remember to turn that back on. We're all set. The next thing I want to show you in the camera is the priority set feature. And this will really speed up your workflow in the field and still offer you some level of protection by not accidentally deleting things or setting things wrong. So it's easy if I just show you in the menu and it'll all make a lot more sense. Now the priority set feature is in the same record erase menu. And we can scroll down and you can see the default setting is set to no. And if I click over, I can change it to yes. But let's leave it on no and let me show you what that does. If I go in and push play and look at an image I took and I hit the delete button or the trash icon, you can see it says yes and no. And that's the priority setting is set to no. So that's why it starts on no. So to delete this picture, I have to click up and then click OK. You can see that took three button clicks, right? I have to hit the trash button one, two, and then three, like so. Three button clicks. But if I change the priority set to yes, and I push play, and I want to delete that, all I have to do is say yes and click OK. So now I'm only pushing two clicks instead of three. Uh, this also affects other places in the menu. For example, when I go to uh, format a card, I can do format. It jumps right to yes instead of default no. So just be aware of that because you don't want to accidentally reformat your memory card. But there's still that extra step of clicking OK. So I think you're safe. Now, the other way to quickly delete a uh, card, since I was in this menu, is you can turn Quick Erase on. And then also notice the raw plus JPEG erase. So if you're shooting JPEG only, you can leave it here or you can select this. If you want to delete only the raw but save the JPEG when you're shooting raw plus JPEG, uh, this will only delete the raws. But I just leave it at the default setting raw JPEG. I want to delete both files if I'm shooting in both formats. So now when I go click play, now it's just one button click. And to me, that's great but also can be a little dangerous right so i think a better way is clearly just turn this off and make sure your priority set is set to yes so that now i push delete i have to click one more time before i erase it the next thing i want to talk about is after you take a picture the camera saves your image to a file and it names that file a certain way so let's go over the naming conventions of how the file names are created how you can customize those, and then what does the file name auto reset do? Now, what we're looking at here are just some image files that I offloaded my SD card onto my computer, and you can see that they have all kinds of different letters and names in them. But uh, I can decipher exactly what these files are based on the file name. So let's uh, take an example here. We'll start here with this P4090002. This is the default naming convention that the camera uses, unlike some of the other ones here. <laughs> We have P4090002 JPEG. And the naming convention by default is the first digit represents the color space. The second digit represents the month. The next two digits represent the day. And the last four digits represent sequence number. And then of course the last three letters represent the file format. Now for color space we have two choices sRGB and we have Adobe. And then for month we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But we only have one space here. So what do they do for like 11, 12, 13? Well, they just use letters A, B, C. So this represents September, the nine. A represents October. B is November. C is December. 
And then finally, the last uh, four digits are just the sequence number, so we can store up to 9,999 images before we uh, reset the counter camera. I've never hit that number, so I don't know exactly what happens, to be honest. And then, of course, the last one, we have the file formats. We can do two in our cameras, JPEGs, and RAW image files .orf. And then the last thing is, Whenever the camera used, takes an sRGB, it puts a letter in there, in this case, the letter P, and we shoot in Adobe, it puts an underscore in the front of the file. So using this information, we should be able to easily extrapolate what all the other file names mean. So if we look at this again, right, here's our P409002. So this is an sRGB taken on April 9th. This is picture number two. And that's kind of backed up by the file date here, right? April 9th. And if we go down here, we see EA14007. So that tells me this is an sRGB taken on, uh, this will be October 14th. And as you can see here, it says October 14th, 2020. This is picture number 57. And you may have noticed there's many other different kinds of file names here. Uh, so down here, you'll see I have pen F, number 11, pen F, uh, number 12. And there's two of them here because one is JPEG, one is RAW. However, <clears throat> these are custom file names. These are not the default settings. Uh, if we go up here, you can see that we have a 52EM, picture number four. So I know this was taken with my EM5 Mark II. And again, this is a custom file setting. But if we see an underscore in the front, we know that this is an uh, Adobe RGB color space image. So this is Adobe RGB taken on April 4th, picture number nine. As you can see, it says here, April 4th, 2021. And then up here, I know that this is an RGB file or Adobe file, but this was taken with my EM5 Mark II, but I ran out of digits, so I just used the letter E here. And then, of course, the last four digits are sequence number. This is sequence picture number five. So Adobe RGB, EM5, Mark II. So now let me show you in the camera how to specify sRGB versus Adobe RGB, and then also how to do custom file names. Okay, so the first thing I want to show you is if we go in the super control panel, you can see down here that I'm using the sRGB color space. So the file name is going to start with the letter P by default. But if I change this to Adobe RGB, the file name is going to start with an underscore instead of a letter. Now, if you have multiple cameras, I found it helpful to use custom file names so that when I'm looking at files in my file explorer, it's easy to spot which ones were taken with my Pen F versus which ones were taken with my EM5 Mark II. And it's easy to change the custom file name. All we have to do is go into, oh, it's right here, record a race and edit file name. And we can name them differently for sRGB and Adobe RGB. So for sRGB, for this camera, I would do 52EM because this is my EM5 Mark II. So you just go down here and you put 52 and then EM. Sometimes it's easier just to use the uh, dials. Go. And we'll click OK. As you saw, you can name the first four digits anything you want. But I typically put the digits first, then the model number, and then there'll be some sequence number here, for example, right? The reason I do that is because if I do EM521234, this is a little harder to read, uh, to my eyes anyway. It's much easier to, for me to see that this was my EM52 than it is here. And of course my Pen F, very simple. And then another camera might be your EPL8, right? So I would do this, EPL1234. Now remember I was in the Adobe color space here. So I have to name the file names a little bit differently. Because the first digit 
in the file name is going to be an underscore as you see here so i only have control over the next three so i would just do in this case um five then two and e like that so now when you look at this hopefully this makes a lot more sense we can see that uh, these files here are just standard uh, srgb taken on april 9th picture number two these were taken in october november december with their sequence numbers and then this is taken with my pen f with these sequence numbers uh, again these are all srgbs and as i go up you can see that i took this with my em5 mark ii picture number four and because the first digit is not an underscore I know that this is an srgb color space and because these files have underscores i know that these are adobe color space files taken on april 4th and if i go up a little more i know that again these are adobe rgb color space files but taken with my em5 mark ii now there's one other file format we need to look at and that's these ones with the underscore and the zero one now, when you run into file names that have sort of that underscore 01, underscore 02, 03, et cetera, what's happening is, is when you import your images from the SD card onto your computer, there's already a file with that same exact name on the computer already. So that could mean that it's the same image and it's already been imported. You don't need to do it again. Or it could mean that uh, you have a new image. It just happens to have the same file name. So... To prevent it from overwriting your previous images, it's going to add that extension automatically, like underscore 01, underscore 02. And it'll do this like in Olympus Workspace. It'll do this in Adobe Lightroom. And I'm sure many other uh, uh, image processing software that imports directly off the SD card. But I like to try to avoid that as much as possible because sometimes I'm not importing images. I'm just doing file copy. And depending on how you do your file copy, you might accidentally erase uh, previous images that you didn't mean to. And we can avoid some of that or mitigate some of that problem with a feature in our camera called the file name reset and file name auto. So let's go into the menu and take a look at that. Okay, let's go into the menu. And it's in the same menu H, record erase. And we'll just go down here to file name. And you can see by default, file name is set to reset. We want to change this to auto. And what that's going to do is every time you format your memory card, it's going to remember the last sequence number in the, in the pictures that you took. So if you left off, say, at picture number 200, when you format your memory card and put it in again, it's going to start at, at sequence number 201. So let's take a look at this on the file list. All right, so let's take a look at what happens when we have the file name set to auto. So I format the memory card, I take a picture, and I get two files, one JPEG, one RAW. And I import these in using Olympus Workspace, and then I format my memory card, put it back into my camera, and I take another picture. And it's going to give it the same file name because file name reset resets the sequence number back to one. Now this underscore zero one was not added in camera. This was done by Olympus Workspace because when I take the memory card out and import it using Olympus Workspace or Lightroom, it's going to automatically add this underscore zero one so you don't inadvertently overwrite your previous uh, picture files here. But however, you know, and that seems fine and safe, but however, sometimes I know some people, they like to import or copy their files off their SD card directly into their computer, in which case the computer is going to prompt you, the file explorer is going to say, do you want to overwrite these files? Because they're going to have the same file name. They're not going to have this extension on here. And you might inadvertently click yes and delete your old images, which you may not want to do. Now, if I had put the file name into auto instead of reset, what would happen instead is when I format the memory card, instead of creating the same file number sequence, it would have continued on where we last left off at one. It would go to two, and then I can take another picture and it would go to three, and so on. So now when I go back to import these 
using Olympus Workspace, it's not going to inadvertently, um, it's not going to add this uh, extension underscore zero one. It's just going to import them straight up like this. And also, if you like to just copy off your SD card directly to your computer, rather than using the import function, you're not going to be asked, do you want to overwrite these files? Because they're going to have different file names. Another problem this helps mitigate to some extent is you'll notice that there's no year associated in this uh, file name, right? This could be April 9th of 2021, April 9th of 2019 or 2015, it doesn't matter. Uh, so what this helps mitigate is you don't overwrite uh, files that have the same name every year, right? Because this, this could be any year, we don't know. Uh, but hopefully the file sequence number will be higher like it is here at 57, 62, etc. Um, but uh, that's less of a problem, but it's something to be aware of. All right, so I know this has been a long video, but I hope that all made sense. If not, you know, feel free to ask me any questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Uh, but I hope you found this video helpful. If so, consider subscribing to the channel. Maybe buy me a coffee in the links below. But either way, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll see you again soon.